everyone, it's Kai here. I want to give a huge shout out to Jason Davis, also known as Mr. Fortify, for reaching an incredible milestone of 150 episodes on the Fortified Life podcast. You can catch him on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spreaker Radio, Positive Power 21 Christian Media, and Jerry Royce Live Podcasts. Jason, your dedication and passion have inspired so many, and the best part, you're just getting started. Congratulations, keep fortifying lives and making a difference. Welcome to the Fortified Life Podcast, where we learn how to develop a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. From the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. Here's our host, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, spiritual coach, and my husband, the man they call Mr. Fortified, Jason Davis. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the Fortified Life Podcast, where we are passionate about developing a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. I'm your host, yours truly, Jason Davis, aka Mr. Fortify, and I am excited for another week and another show. We are going to take time out to pause this week. Normally, We have a guest, but we're going to take time out and celebrate all that God has done on this platform, on this show, because we are celebrating our 150th episode, 150. Thank you to all the listeners, all of you who listen to the show, download the show and support the show. We are just getting started. I thought that we would do two things in this episode because it is a major milestone. One, I thought that I would encourage you all and just tell you where we are like a state of the union on the show. Secondly, I had a mentor of mine recently challenge me to share with a discipleship group. And it was from the perspective of everything that I've learned in my life thus far. He said, Jason, you know what? I know you haven't, quote unquote, hit a milestone age yet or the next one per se in age 40. But he said, I want you to I want you to go ahead and share. You know, you only you're only three years out from 40 anyway. And you've been through a lot. God has brought you through a lot. You have scarred tissue and your story is an asset not a liability, so share it. So we're going to talk about the podcast, and then I'm going to share a few sage points up until this point in my life, some lessons that God has had me learn in my lifetime. Just quick review of the show. Like I said, 150 episodes in. My God. Here's a little snapshot of the performance of the show. This is just from July to August of 2024. We, we'll probably at a later date do a whole deal where we go into uh, what has the show looked like year over year. But just from July to August time frame, we've had 3,441 downloads, and that's across Spreaker, Apple, and Spotify. We also had 148 total live plays. Now, for those of you who don't know, while the show gets distributed on demand to all the major platforms of choice, our show streams live here on Positive Power 21 Christian Media and the Weekend Channel. And so we do get live plays. So we had 148 just over the last 30 days. We average 2,000 listeners per podcast. And that also includes RSS feeds for the nerds out there. So God is moving. I couldn't do anything without the Lord Jesus Christ, all of you listeners, and all of the wonderful guests that we've had on the show. The show has now attained global reach. Again, just looking at the last 30 days. The show can be heard in the United States, Uganda, Japan, the Netherlands, Trinidad and Tobago, 
the UK, Canada, Australia, Kenya, India, the Bahamas, Saudi Arabia, Rwanda, Philippines, Tanzania, Brazil, Ireland, South Africa, Switzerland, Croatia, Israel, South Korea, Pakistan, and Gila, and G- yeah, and Gila, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, forgive me for those of you, <laughs> if you're from there, I'm sorry. And then Botswana. My God, that's just over the last 30 days. God is clearly moving. I can't thank him enough. And I can't thank you, the listeners, enough. Now, we're going to get to the point where we always won't be able to do this. But at 150, this might be the last time we get to listen to all of the wonderful guests that God has allowed to grace our platform. In episode one, we had Chanel E. Martin. She's the publisher of Beyond uh, the Book Media, the publisher of my book per se, and the founder of Beyond the Book Media, which is my publisher for my book, Fortify, being rooted in God's plan for work and business. So she was the very first episode some three years ago, and Chanel's episode kicked off a host of others, including Kylie Ota, Beth Copeland, John Posey, Kenny Hill, Susan McVeigh, Pastor Jordan Sherritt, Lisa Smith, Corey Gibson, Boyd Bailey, Jane Trapman, Art Corbin, Julie Winger, Tip Levette, John Harrison, Emma Sarah McMillian, Andre Kennebrew, Michael Blue, Cheryl Selloway, Quentin Veals, Cam Phillips, Lindsay Walker, Janet Kaup, Irina Currington, Pastor Mikai Collier, Renee Whaley, Lauren Bradford, former Miss Alabama, Courtney Martin, Ryan Ruffner, Pastor Chandler Bailey, Maureen Osuji, Suzanne Johnson, Jacinta Martin, Darian Sam, Janelle Reed, Dawn Kirk, Jennifer Black, John Sims, James C. Hunter, Yahana Deemer, Angie Robertson, Lily May, Whitney Barbary, Kim Walsh Phillips, Nicole Miller, Lori Genevish, Leo Sabo, Lauren Gaidek, Brandon Gailey, Kelly Botter, Howard Partridge, Dave Chesson, Dr. Rodney Agin, Bob Loddick, Andrina Sawyer, Jen O'Donnell, Dr. Nathaniel Dunlap, Jeff and Beth McCord, Jerry Meek, Rachel Cruz, Dr. Dave Arnott, Darren Shearer, Art Rayner, Monica Leak, Jackie Horbrook, Cece Silliman Williams, Crystal Parker, Sean Triska Jones, Nikisa Jackson, Phyllis Carter Riles, Christy Wright, Victoria Rogers Neal, Bishop Garland Hunt, Nicholas Jackson, Bernice Lohman, Krista Miller, Andrea Sherwood, Trog Trogden, Paula G. Voice, Chris Lutz, Max Story, Jamal Maxim, Earl Murray III, Sarah M., Whitney Davis, a.k.a. Just Witty, Nicole DeWard, Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith, Cheryl Ann Sherwood, Cindy Marvin, Bonnie Kim, Alicia Vaz, Brandon Sieben, Jaleesa Dallas, Pastor Brian Kluth, Shay Bynes, Ken Coleman, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, Kevin Harris, Natalie Bourne, Troy Young, Dr. Quentin Florence, Carol Mendoza, Chris Patton, Henri Ward, David Hewins, Rhea Story, Christy Nauruzi, Jem Brangenberg, Bianca Modo, Dr. Uyi and Dr. Faith Abraham, Rebecca Hansen, Dr. Paul White, 
Pastor Victor Johnson, Martha Brangenberg, Jeff Bond, Dr. Lindsay Padilla, Stan Belashev, Jace Raby, Dr. Brandon Mines, Apostle John E. Ross, Jade Warshaw, Chad Hall, Larissa Jean, Toby Carvana, Vanessa Griffin Gamage, George Camel, Benj Miller, Ed Roberts, Alan Dibb, Deanna Zubrikis, Joy Caps, Rick Box, and Anna Megrelishvili. Those are all the wonderful guests that God has graced to come on this platform as we celebrate 150 episodes, and we are just getting started. A little history about the show. When I, I first started the podcast, it was called the Jericho Force podcast. I was just being obedient to what God wanted me to do. And after meeting with our very own Jerry Royce, the Batman, the founder of Positive Power 21 Christian Media, after praying about it, talking to my wife and talking to Jerry, he said, let's do it. So I was just responding out of being obedient. But then as God began to shape my path more and the branding changed and that word fortify was very strong, my book and several other things, we changed the branding on and there was only one thing left to do, rename the podcast. And so in 2023, we renamed the show, The Fortified Life Podcast. We've switched music themes throughout the time. Uh, so it's many of the themes you just are just by awesome independent artists, but one that was very uh, exciting is a good friend of mine, John J. Sims, who also does a lot of graphics for the show. Um, in addition to Jerry and his song Sunday church uh, was our podcast theme for a number of months. So shout out to John J. Sims. You could find him on Apple, Spotify, all the music platforms. Shout out to John for sure. So we've changed the name. We've had music change. The mission hasn't changed to develop a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. That is what hasn't changed. We've added episode type. So besides just doing traditional interviews or me doing a teaching or us pulling something out of the vault, a speaking engagement or me ministering at a, a, another church or a public event, besides me teaching, besides interviews, we added a tools and resources episode type. A lot of you out there, you're working professionals, entrepreneurs, business owners. What about tools that actually help you do business day to day could be CRM, you know, customer relationship management tools, financial tooling and banking platforms, uh, membership platforms, private podcasting. Uh, if there's a product or service and obviously we vet them, but if it can add value, we wanted to add value to you, the listeners. And so we added tools and resources, and that's been an awesome addition to the show over the last year. And those are some of my favorite episodes and some of you, the listeners, favorite episodes. If you would like to give ideas on content type, please email us at info at jerichoforce.com info at jerichoforce.com we're only going to get better and better but one of the ways we do that is with your help with your support i encourage you to listen to the show subscribe to the show and leave a positive review the more positive reviews that we get it helps the searchability of the show on all the major podcast platforms so please support 
the show by subscribing on your podcast platform of choice, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, whatever it is, subscribe to the show, download the show, and also leave a positive review. If the show has blessed you in any capacity, leave a positive review so God can continue to move on this show. That's a state of the union of what God has done these last 149 episodes. Before I go, I just want to bless you. I told you that story about how my mentor challenged me. Jason, you are in the becoming stage. You are becoming a sage. You still have a lot of life to live, but you've got value that you can add right now. Not that I don't. Obviously, I speak, I minister, I do all these things, but I never really thought of myself in that sage mode, right? I I think of men and women, wise men and women that have lived life. They're probably over 50, over 60, and almost every word that comes out of their mouth, you're just holding on to it because you're just like, my God, Lord, it's like you've just anointed their lips and everything they say is just dripped in wisdom and understanding. But my mentor challenged me. And I want to share with you some of the life principles, points, and I believe they they cross over. You know us here on the show. We don't compartmentalize our faith. So I believe many of these things that I'll share with you touch both personal and professional. And I'll also share some of the major scriptures that have impacted my life as well as some of my favorite books. The first principle I'd like to share with you is... Like what we always talk about, don't compartmentalize your faith. I remember one instance in working, there was a major project that my team was a part of working in technology and IT, software development. And this particular individual, she said, Jason, I just don't get it. I don't understand. How are you not stressed out? And I'll never forget, I was going to give her kind of, you know, the normal answer. You know, I just try not to take myself too seriously and, you know, make sure that I'm detaching from what I'm doing, taking breaks. And I'll never forget the Holy Spirit stopped me. It was like slow motion, like an outer body experience. And I, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, Jason, this is one of those opportunities. Tell her where your peace really comes from. And I said, ah, gotcha. And I let her know, I said, hey, I'm not really sure where you're at in your life or with your faith, but for me, it's my dependency on God. It's my dependency on Jesus. And after pausing for a few seconds, she said, I knew it. I knew you were one of those people. Now, I don't really recall what her faith was, but... When you, I don't know if you've heard people say that quote before, preach the gospel, speak if necessary. This was the first time in my life where it actually happened. I saw it lived out. She saw something in me that was different. I had a supernatural level of peace that transcended human understanding. And that was attractive, not because of anything I did, but only because of the Holy Spirit, because the fruit of the Spirit And me trying to live a life with the Christ as the foundation, that's what she saw. So she saw the Spirit of the Lord working in me and manifesting with peace in the midst of a stressful project. And so being bold enough, being intentional enough to share with people, those who you work with, who you have board meetings with, who you have negotiations with, tell them, share with them sincerely and passionately why it is you do what you do. I didn't need a megaphone. I didn't throw the Bible at her. I simply shared my heart because she had been watching me. She told me, Jason, I've been watching you and there's just something different about you. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we might be the only Bible that someone ever reads and it's up to us to bear much fruit And let the Holy Spirit work in us. God isn't just the God of Sunday. He's the God 
of every day. Don't compartmentalize your faith. We are all marketplace ministers in our sphere of influence. We're all ministers in our sphere of influence, whether that's business, media, art, sports, faith, entertainment, education, healthcare, no matter what it is, we are ministers in that sphere of influence. As an application, invite Jesus in to everything you're doing. Pray before your board meeting. Pray before your team meeting. Invite Jesus into the business or whatever your context is. Invite him in so that your work and your soul can thrive. Invite Jesus in. Make him your business partner. Now, I've heard this said before, but the Holy Spirit gave me fresh revelation on this quote. Don't just make him your business partner. Make him your business partner with a controlling stake. You see, much like a business, you can have a business be jointly owned and it could be 50-50. Yeah, I've got 50%. Let's say you got 50%. We're all happy. We're all good. But when somebody has 51% and the other has 49 they have controlling interest. How much more in our life to let Jesus, after all he, who he is and all that he's done in our life, let him have the controlling stake. He's not just our savior. He's our Lord. So don't just make him a business partner. Make him a business partner with a controlling stake. If you're looking for reading material, study Jesus's parables. Many of Jesus's parables have a business or financial context. Food for thought. Read Genesis chapter 1. Pay attention to the dialogue between God and Adam and the timing of when work shows up and when marriage and Eve shows up. Work has predated a lot of things. Pay attention in Genesis chapter 1. Read also the book of Nehemiah, the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes. There's biblical business principles everywhere if you're just willing to read and study and allow the Holy Spirit to move in your heart. That's principle number one. Don't compartmentalize your faith. Principle number two, be an and person, not an or person. Be an and person, A-N-D. Be an and person, not an or person. I have a background as a software engineer. And what's interesting about writing code is there's multiple ways to code a solution or to code an app. If you spoke to 50 different developers, they would all give you a different opinion on how something should be coded and how it should be architected. And that comes from having an open mind. You see, an or person has binary thinking, black, white. Yes, no. We know there's a lot of gray area in life. But not just from the integrity standpoint. It's options. A third option exists, but only if we humble ourselves to the possibilities. So be an and person, not an or person. Some application you find out a lot about yourself with your spouse or your significant other. When you're an and person, it, it helps your relationship. There's better flow of ideas, problem solving, and even talking about hopes and dreams. Some personal tools. I encourage you to take the um, five love languages. Take your love language test. Take the DISC assessment. On the professional side of things, when you allow yourself to be open to more possibilities, it helps with innovation and problem solving. What helps on the professional side, tools-wise, get a mentor. Again, take DISC and other assessments. And also, I encourage you, it's a great book. I have many book recommendations, but a great one is One Minute Mentor. One Minute Mentoring by Ken Blanchard. So be an and person, not a or person. Number three, steward your gifts. Steward your gifts. What I call the three Ds. 
All of these involve the process of stewarding your gift, discovery, development, and delegation. Discovery. There's three people involved in discovering your gift, God, yourself, and others in the form of feedback or encouragement. All gifts, every good and perfect thing comes from above, down from the Father of the heavenly light. So God gives gifts. Ourselves, we have to dare to enter that discovery process of what our gifts are. That's on us. And then others ask others for feedback. Feedback is a gift. If you have four or five people tell you, man, Jason, man, Billy, man, Susie, you're really good at that. I think you should lean into that. Ding, 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 ding. Pay attention. That's discovery. The second D, development. It's our responsibility to grow and enhance our gift, not to squander it. The third D, delegation. So once I find out what I'm great at, if I'm not great at something, hire or farm it out, delegate it. Don't be arrogant. Let someone help you. So steward your gift. Steward your gifts through discovery, development, and delegation. Pray, try things, get feedback, take assessments. Number four, Unchecked private thoughts become public storms. This is what I call the water leak story. I remember, I think it was our second year of marriage, my wife and I. I went downstairs early in the morning, had to be like 5.30, 6 a.m. I go to turn on the sink faucet. Boom, water spraying everywhere. It's, and then it was, it was spilling so quickly, it got all over the floor and everything. And... I was panicking. I had to go and actually shut the main water off. Well, my wife comes down the stairs. She's flustered, still trying to wake up. She's like, well, what's going on? She's panicking. I'm panicking. And now argument ensues. She goes, um, well, let me, let me call my mom about it. And I just remembered in the moment, just word vomit, like, why are you calling mom? You going to call your mom for everything? That obviously did not end well. Not husbands, so I had the silent treatment for probably an hour. And the Lord reminded me in that moment, I was embarrassed because of it happening. And because of my childhood and the way things come up, having financial difficulty, there was a sense of I had to be perfect and couldn't make mistakes because of all the trials that my family had gone through. So in that moment moment of making a mistake, it triggered a lot of things. And I was embarrassed and I took it out on my wife, but I had an unchecked private thought because early on in our marriage, uh, we were still learning how to leave and cleave. And so really I had been pondering to myself, man, we really need to start learning how to do things as a marriage. We can't always just over rely on our parents and siblings. They're always happy to help, but we had to really learn how to work through things as a marriage. And instead of saying that word vomit <laughs> came out, don't let a unchecked, don't let a thought, don't let a private thought go unchecked because it could become a public storm. Say what you mean when it counts. If you have to go to counseling or therapy or talk to mentor mentors, whatever that looks like, make sure your thoughts Go to a healthy place. You're not getting triggered by old traumas and old things that you've been through. Easier said than done. But when you steward that emotional capacity with the Holy Spirit's help, it pays dividends. Later on, when my wife and I reconciled, she had a chance to think about that. And so she was better able to understand what I was trying to say, even though I said it in a terrible way. She forgave me. And then we started to really go down the path of, okay, what does it look like for us to actually work through things before we call for help? The fifth principle, transparency begets more transparency. I'm talking about vulnerability here. When I speak to people, and my mentor told me this, in any particular case, when you're addressing folks, 
even in conversation, you can do two things, the two eyes. You can try to impress people, or you can try to impact people. You impress people by telling them all about your success, but you impact people by telling them all about failure. The world, especially coming off of COVID-19 pandemic and all the police brutality and economic uncertainty, all the crazy things that happened over the last three years, and now we're in 2024, it's an election year, and things are still crazy, but from a different perspective. The world is yearning and dying for transparency. And when you're transparent, the floodgates open for others to be vulnerable and transparent. Some relational advice that my wife and I have learned together. We celebrated eight years of marriage back in March of 2024. These are two things that we jointly did. We are by no means marriage experts. I'm just sharing with you at this kind of midpoint in my life as I approach 40. Here are two things that we did together as a couple. One, we developed a mission statement for our family together, and ours is to love God and love people right out of Scripture. And then how we do that, we came up and developed uh, core family values that spell out the word SILK. So the SILK acronym stands for the following. The S stands for stewardship. The I stands for integrity. The L stands for leadership. And the K stands for Kaizen. So we are going to love God and love people. And we're going to do that by excelling in stewardship, integrity, leadership, and Kaizen. And for all the fancy process improvement people out there, Kaizen continuous improvement. Some scriptures that have deeply impacted my life, Hebrews 3.13, but encourage one another every day, as long as it's called today, so that you don't become hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Encouragement, mindset, Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord and not to men. Debt freedom, Proverbs 22.7, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Financial principle, don't allow anything, kind of the a general principle to pull out, don't let anything become a stumbling block or inhibit your relationship with God. And debt is one of those things financially that if we're not inviting the Lord into our finances, With debt, it creates a master-slave mentality, and when you are caught in a snare, it's hard to be able to keep our focus on God. And so, from a financial perspective, may we not get burdened with debt. Maybe I'll do a money episode talking all about debt and debt payoff, because my wife and I have a powerful testimony there, too. James 1, 5, wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask, and God will give it freely. I don't know about you, but I need wisdom every single day. Second Peter chapter 1, the apostle Peter lists out growth virtues. So think of this as spiritual growth virtues or spiritual growth plan. Supplement. This is uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse... Five, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Why? In verse eight. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. The last scripture that's been deeply impactful before we say some books and sign off. 
Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul's prayer at Ephesus. 16 and 17, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Powerful prayer. Before I leave you all in this celebration of episode 150, let me tell you some of my favorite books. I have a running list, but these are just what came to mind. I'm going to tell you the book and why. Everything You Need by Dr. David Jeremiah. So the eight growth virtues in Second Peter chapter 1, Dr. David Jeremiah digs into that. So Everything You Need, Dr. David Jeremiah. Kingdom Purpose by Dr. Tony Evans. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> purpose. All of us have a customized, personalized plan from God. Forward by Dr. David Jeremiah, purpose for tomorrow. 15 invaluable laws of growth, John Maxwell, that's about personal growth. Fathered by God, John Eldridge, that talks about the six stages of the masculine journey. The Millionaire Next Door by Dr. Thomas J. Stanley. Real wealth. Not all this fake stuff and people on social media putting their best foot forward. Real data-driven metrics on what a real millionaire is. Your Money Made Simple by Russ Crossan. One of the best money how-to books I've read. Learning to Lead Like Jesus by Boyd Bailey. All about leadership. Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni, Teamwork. Failing Forward, again, John Maxwell, about failure and adversity. Humble Inquiry by Professor Edgar Schein, that's about communication. The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews, Success and Decision Making. One Minute Mentoring, I mentioned this one earlier, by Ken Blanchard, about mentoring. Leadership Coaching by Tony Stoltzfus on the skill of coaching. And lastly, QBQ, question behind the question, learning to ask good questions. Brothers and sisters, I just wanted to share and encourage you. We're at episode 150, and we are just getting started. To God be the glory, and His hand is on this show. Support leave a positive review, download the show, subscribe to the show. You know how we leave things. Don't compartmentalize your faith in the marketplace. And from the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. God bless. Thank you so much. Episode 150. We're out. Thank you for listening to the Fortified Life Podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out fortifiedlifepodcast.com for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis' book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon. You're listening to Do Your Worldwide Podcast.